This episode is brought to you by 1010. 1010 is an exclusive collection of 10 one-of-a-kind engagement rings designed by 10 of the most distinctive designers working today. Using only diamonds responsibly and sustainably sourced from Botswana, 10 design masters have each produced a uniquely beautiful diamond ring, launching exclusively on January 18th at BlueNile.com. This exciting limited edition collection of diamond engagement rings launches on January 18th, and you can preview it exclusively at BlueNile.com. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 864, on making child care work, by Hilary Barnett of WholeMotherhood.co. Hello, everybody. This is your ORD host, Greg Audino, wishing you a very happy New Year's Eve. We are here to ring in 2021 as we would ring in any other weekday with you, and that is by sharing some great relationship content for you. Is improving your relationship something on your New Year's resolution list? Hope so. If so, you are in the right place. Let's see what our author, Hilary Barnett, has to help you start the year off right with and start optimizing your life. On Making Child Care Work by Hilary Barnett of WholeMotherhood.co Child care. It's a pretty fraught subject. Just the word can send shivers down the spine of even the most courageous new mother. The thought of leaving your tiny, helpless baby with anyone but you sounds like a total impossibility. They need you, physically, emotionally, psychologically. Separating from your child, especially when they are still tiny, may be the hardest thing you ever do as a mother. And yet, we're going to need someone to take care of them, because the reality is we can't always be with them every single minute of every single day. Technically, yes, we can, and some mothers do, and to each her own. But eventually, there is going to come a time when you have to make this decision. If you ever want some time alone or just a night out with friends or your significant other. And for those of us who rely on childcare so that we can work, it is a decision that looms over us from the moment our children are born. The situation for mothers who need to work is less than ideal. Overall, 70% of U.S. women with children under 18 participate in the labor force. The U.S. ranks dead last among developed nations on the issue of paid maternity leave, which, from the start, forces American women to make a very difficult choice. The cost for quality child care continues to rise, leaving mothers between a rock and a hard place. When I was expecting my first child, my fear surrounding my job situation was intense. What was I going to do? What if I brought her home and just couldn't bear to part with her for 40 hours a week? I knew I wanted to be with my daughter and that the cost of a full-time daycare center would void out any full-time position I could get, since my background was in nonprofit management. Not only was I crossing this great precipice into motherhood, which was huge enough, I had to plan how I would keep earning an income at the same time, and quick. The nonprofit where I was employed at the time did not have any part-time openings, and outside of providing six weeks of paid leave, could not provide a working arrangement that made sense for me as a new mom. So, at six weeks postpartum, after an unplanned C-section, I began to search for an interview for part-time work. I remember the first time I went for an interview at a local NPR affiliate station for a development assistant temp position. I woke up completely blinded by exhaustion. I immediately brewed a cup of coffee to jumpstart my brain, showered, something that was a rare treat, blow-dried my hair, and put on makeup. After I found a suitable outfit that wasn't yoga pants and a spit-up covered t-shirt, it was go time. I looked in the mirror and distinctly remembered thinking, this is such a farce. They are going to see right through me, my bloodshot eyes blinking strangely at the light, my pale skin, it looks like I just crawled out of a cave. How can I pretend that I am in any position to report to work? How can I even begin to enter the outside world? Surprisingly, I fooled them. I got the job which meant three days per week driving in 9 to 5 traffic north of downtown to the office. Leaving my daughter was the hardest thing I have ever had to do. I nursed her exclusively for eight months and would get up in the middle of the night to try and pump enough for the next day. I pumped three times a day at work. It was no picnic, but I was making money and still getting to spend most of the week with her, which I counted as a total gift. Eventually, I decided I needed to work for myself. And with God's providence and some really lucky breaks, I was able to start my own freelancing business and replace my part-time income. I haven't looked back since. 
and my childcare needs have stayed fairly steady since those days. I'm going to be upfront with you right now. I got lucky. Really, really lucky. When my daughter was young, both my parents and my husband's parents relocated to our town. They were both retiring and wanted to be close to family. And since my children were young, we have been able to leave them with Grandma and Grammy. I know what you're thinking. Trust me, my friends say it to me all the time and without holding back. I have it so easy. I have no idea what other moms are dealing with when it comes to childcare. I have free childcare. And I am guaranteed that these women love and care for my children as much as I do. I know, you want to throw tomatoes at me. Go right ahead, I deserve it. But, after you're done throwing, please hear me. I know that I am beyond lucky to have this. I realize that this is the unicorn situation, and I am grateful. But even if this were not my situation, I would still have needed to figure something out. Since those early days, we have utilized several different childcare services, primarily the amazing Mother's Day Out programs that are prevalent at churches here in the South, as well as babysitters. Lots of babysitters. We know the cost of good childcare, and we know the sacrifices that it takes to make ends meet when you still need to work as a mom. I have chosen to walk the tightrope of self-employment, which to some can seem like a walk in the park, but it certainly comes with its own set of challenges. I know my story isn't unique. Every single mother I know is figuring it out as she goes, making it work. Whether she is home the majority of the time, working a side gig, freelancing, needs help just to get a few errands run, or is working 40 plus hours each week and needs to know that her children are being loved and cared for each day as she would care for them herself. Let's be honest, the system is not rigged in our favor. But, like women throughout history always have, we make it work. We figure it out. We make a plan. We do the best we can. And we accept the pitfalls and potential guilt and questions along the way. You just listened to the post titled On Making Child Care Work by Hilary Barnett of WholeMotherhood.co. Hey everyone, I know we talk a lot about mental health here on the show, but if you think mental and physical health aren't related, you have got another thing coming, and that is why we are happy to be partnering with Green Chef, the first USDA certified organic meal kit company. They offer clean ingredients you can trust, seasonally sourced for peak freshness. And those ingredients come pre-measured, perfectly portioned, and mostly prepped, so you can spend less time stressing and more time enjoying delicious home-cooked meals. I am a fan of their Southwest Shave Steak Salad. It took me less than a half an hour to prepare. It was gourmet, and it included a great assortment of vegetables. Not to mention, it was clearly better than anything I would have ever prepared myself had I gone to the market and picked out ingredients. So, if you want to try the number one meal kit for eating well, Go to greenchef.com slash ORD90 and use code ORD90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash ORD90 and use code ORD90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. And a big thanks to Hillary for sharing today. She has both described the challenges of her situation and acknowledged the greater challenges that other mothers face regarding childcare. She mentioned early on how this difficult decision is put into effect immediately upon childbirth. And while she makes a point about how the emotions before a child is born are quickly washed away, expecting parents still should do their best to plan these types of things as soon as the pregnancy occurs, if not beforehand. Of course, there is a lot of planning done in advance for the baby's sake. You know, getting rooms ready, formula, clothes, car seats. But it's easy for parents to forget how they will be impacted within the lives they've already established for themselves. And honing in on this before the baby is born, or even conceived, when it's easier to think a little more logically and not be so entranced by our newborns, is something to really focus on. I know that doesn't sound too warm and fuzzy, but surely parents need to prepare for how their emotions will change, uh, as they will only give to their babies as much as they can give to themselves. For this reason, the decision to have a baby should be taken very seriously and not just followed because all of our friends and family members followed the trend, as work is the very least of that which will change for us when we become parents. And we have to change the right way as parents if we expect to parent the right way. Food for thought. Thank you, Hillary, and thanks to you guys all for being here. 
Have a great New Year's Eve, everyone. Be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next year where your optimal life awaits.